Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's UCLA Alumni Town Hall with UCLA Athletics Director Martin Jarman, hosted by UCLA Alumni Board of Directors Chris McLaughlin. My name is Joseph Blancas and I serve as an Associate Director at the UCLA Alumni Association. The UCLA Alumni Town Hall series is a gathering place where Bruins can have their voices heard, ask essential questions, and receive transparency and expertise. In today's program, Martin Jarman will provide updates on UCLA Athletics, the student athlete experience, as well as what's ahead for UCLA athletics. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank our Alumni Association sustaining donors. It's with your help that we are able to strengthen the Bruin community with programs like this. For some general webinar housekeeping, we'll have time at the end for a Q&A. So please email your questions to the email provided into the chat. We will be recording the event and we'll share it out once it's available. Now to start our program, I'm excited to introduce our moderator for today, Chris McLaughlin. Chris is an Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer at Kestra Holdings. She previously served as Chief Marketing Officer of the IBM Partner Marketing Ecosystem. Chris holds a Bachelor's of Arts in Mass Communications from UCLA, from UCLA and is an avid traveler having visited 65 countries thus far. Chris, thank you for being here and for moderating the conversation. I'll turn it over to you to start our program. Joseph, thank you so much. And I am pleased to be joined by Martin Jarman, who is UCLA's ninth athletic director. Uh, Martin joined UCLA uh, in the midst of the pandemic, May 2020. And we're coming up on three years later and looking forward to hearing about everything that's happened in between. Lots to cover. Uh, but before we jump into that, let me just share a little bit of your background, Martin. Um, you came to us from Boston College, where you were director of athletics for three years. Before that, you were deputy director of athletics at Ohio State and spent seven years uh, at Michigan State as the assistant athletic director for development. So we're going to hear a little bit more about some of your old friends uh, when we start talking <laughs> about what's coming up for athletics. Um, in addition to all of that, um, Martin, you hold an MBA and also a master's in sports administration from Ohio University. And some may also know you were a student athlete yourself and you were a two-year captain of the men's basketball team at University of North Carolina at Wilmington. And in 2000, you led the team to their first NCAA tournament appearance and want to hear more about what it's like to go into that tournament and be a student athlete. So welcome. Thank you so much for spending the time with Bruin alumni. You know, we're, we're big sports fans and certainly interested in what's coming up. Thank so you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, first of all, for doing this, Chris, and stepping up. And uh, I appreciate that. And, and also to all the 406 Bruins that registered to uh, attend this uh, athletics town hall. Thank you uh, for taking time out of your, your evening. Fantastic. Well, Martin, you know, there's a couple sports that get a lot of television time, but you're responsible for 25 sports overall. Uh, so maybe we start there and just talk about your sort of broad portfolio of responsibilities and, and what you've learned over the last couple of years. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I, I get to work with talented people every day and amazing student athletes. Uh, you know, students come to UCLA uh, to really get the number one public institution in the country to high academic, but also to compete athletically at the highest level. And we have phenomenal student athletes. And so we're we're blessed and fortunate to work with them and serve them every day. Uh, we have 25 sports and, and our sports right now are, are doing incredibly well. Right now, we have nine teams that are currently in the top 18 in the country. Teams ranked first, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, 12th. Um, it, it's, it's phenomenal, you know, and most of those are in the top 10, top five even. So uh, we are knocking on wood right now. We are, we are firing on all cylinders as far as competitively. Uh, and so it's, it's really fun to see UCLA athletics really on the top as far as uh, across the board in our sports. Well, what's the secret? You know, uh, I know you brought in your elite philosophy. How has that helped sort of elevate everything across all sports, not just a couple? 
Yeah, well, you know, the, the, the beauty of it is um, the student athletes do all the work. You know, we're, we're here in the background to support them and put them in positions to be successful. And our coaches, we have great coaches that, that work hard, um, get the big picture, understand it's about development. You recruit students, you develop them, you help them, we mold them, and we, and we help them grow to be the best version of themselves. Uh, the elite mentality, glad you mentioned that. That's something that we, we pride ourselves in in our athletic program. It's a mindset. Uh, energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, excellence. That's elite. And that's a mindset. That's not wins and losses. That's every day having a mindset. I'm going to give you everything I've got as a teammate, as a coworker. Um, I'm going to do my best and, uh, and just have that mindset. It starts with energy. You got to have enthusiasm and energy uh, to do the work that we do. You know, um, I like to be around people that are up not down, you know, when you walk in a room, right? Are you bringing energy to that room or are you taking energy from that room? Or that Zoom, that's a new one now. So you, you're taking it from the Zoom or you're bringing it. And then leadership. Leadership starts with leading yourself. Um, at the end of the day, we have to do what we need to do to, to make sure I bring the best version of myself to the office, to the competition, whatever it is. Integrity, UCLA, we're gonna do it the right way. That's a non-negotiable. We're gonna do things on the up and up. That's what we're about. That's what we've always been about and will continue to be. And then toughness. Uh, you gotta to have a level of grit to see it through. It's hard. Winning, competing, um, putting yourself out there in the arena is hard. It's difficult. Uh, the lights are bright, but you gotta have a level of toughness and hold on when others let go. And the last E is excellence. That's the standard of UCLA. That's what we are, um, are held to a higher standard. Uh, and those that came before us, we stand on the shoulders of greats, great Bruins in the past. And that's what we're going to do to keep representing and elevate our program as we move forward. Well, and you talk, you talk about Bruin greats. I know recently you post on social media, you got one of the top social media games out there. <laughs> uh, you, you had a wonderful post about Coach Wooden and, you know, reminders of life lessons from Coach. I know, you know, you spent time getting to know the history and the background of other greats. Wondering if there's a couple insights from any of those folks uh, that you've spent time with or you studied up that you think would be valuable for Bruins to be reminded about. Well, you know, first of all, I think you always look at your competitive advantages, right? And you've got to lean into those and you have to embrace those. I think UCLA, we have one of uh, the most, if not the most storied athletic programs in the country. And so you have to lean into that. You can't know where you're going unless you know where you've been and what the greatness and what made UCLA so attractive and so great right now. Those four letters are known all across the world. And so you really have to understand that and let that be a part of your DNA, your fabric. You know, that's why we don't just talk about Coach Wooden, right? Um, we have the Wooden Academy where our student athletes go through a series of programming when they get here every year whether it's resume building, workshop, leadership, different things of the pyramid that they learn um, when they come to campus. So it's not just something we say or we talk about or a pyramid on the wall. We live it and breathe it because that's who we are. You have to understand the sacrifices that were made and those that, that came before us to put us in this position now to where we have a platform, a national worldwide platform. So um, I would tell you, you know, growing up, uh, you mentioned the Michigan State. I remember being in my cubicle at 22, 23 years old, and I had a, a, a pyramid in my, on my wall, you know, and I had it for like two years. You know, never did I think that I would be at UCLA or living in LA. I'm just a kid from Fayetteville, North Carolina. But um, the writing was on the wall, you know, it's special to be here. And we just try to make sure that we honor those and, and, and respect our tradition and our history. You got to embrace it. You have to embrace it if you're going to be successful at UCLA. Um, that there's so much greatness that we've had. So I think that's a competitive advantage. I think we have to lean into that. But also we're in the, we're in the recruitment of talent business, right? We do two things. We recruit talent and we develop talent. That's it. And so you have to lean on that history. But also when you're recruiting 16, 15, 17, 18-year-old kids, sometimes that doesn't, that doesn't resonate. So you have to be current with the times and progress moving forward in an environment that's very chaotic in college athletics right now. Well, what, I think one of the things that you did uh, to help make the school more attractive is the contract that uh, we have with Nike. Maybe you could say a little bit about that and, and how that has helped 
when you're serving our student athletes now and approaching prospects? Yeah, you know, I tell our students, I tell our, our, our staff, I, I mean, I, I did a, a speaking at a conference yesterday, bet on yourself. You know, at the end of the day, you've done the work, you've prepared, and there comes uh, a time, a moment where you really have to believe firmly in what you feel is best and you bet on yourself. And that's something that we pride ourselves with our agreement with Nike and Jordan brand. Um, our student athletes deserve the best. They deserve the best gear, uh, the most technologically advanced uh, gear that we can have. And that's Nike. That's, that's around the world. They're the best. Jordan brand has a level um, of sophistication, of elegance, of performance, and they're the best also. And that's, that's really important to our student athletes. They love being a part of Nike and Jordan brand. And so, um, you know, we had a challenging situation with our former apparel company and we decided to be bold and just try to, to make sure that um, we did the best that we could in the environment at the time to, to get a deal that would help our student athletes and, and you know, um, just move forward in that positive way. And so we're excited about it. They're about the right things, the values align. And so it's been a good partnership that's gonna to continue to grow. Well, talk about bold moves. I think everybody wants to hear a little bit about the move from Pac-12 to Big Ten, uh, and 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 based on your 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 history there, uh, maybe you tell us a little bit about when when this idea came up. Why did why was it thought of that this would be a good move for UCLA? And you know what does it mean for the student athletes? And then what does it mean for fans who want to follow the team? So I'll, I'll be. Um... There's some things I can't share at this, at this moment about the whole process, but, but what I can share with you, Chris, is, um, you know, at the end of the day, my, my job is to position our student athletes and our athletic program in a position of strength and in the best way to support them and move forward. That's it. My, my responsibility is not to a certain conference or a certain personnel, it's to our student athletes and what can we do to position UCLA athletics not for looking in the rear view, but looking forward and where college athletics is going and have a uh, be in a position of strength. That's what UCLA deserves. That's what we've always been. That's what we're going to continue to be. And so in this environment where it's very chaotic, and for, for those of you that don't know college athletics, um, I was at a dinner last night in Newport Beach, and, and I said it to everybody in the room, this is probably the most chaotic time in college athletics in the past 50 years. And that's because of conference realignment, but it's also the transfer portal uh, where student athletes can now transfer immediately, uh, whereas they couldn't before. Name, image, and likeness. Before, student athletes couldn't profit off their name, image, and likeness. Now they can. Um, so that brings the element of, of business and uh, different things to the table. And so it's just, it's just when there's new things that come that are so disruptive and huge, um, it, it becomes difficult to navigate where it's going. So you really got to focus in on, on us. What do we need to be successful? What do we need to not only maintain that level of excellence that UCLA has always had, but moving forward, going into the future, what are the things that we're going to need to continue that? And that's what I focused on. That's what, uh, and, and, and I, am, I am so fortunate, we are so fortunate to have Chancellor Gene Block because that move to the Big Ten um, he led us through that and he knows and, and loves athletics and knows what the experience for our student athletes can and should be. And this is going to allow us to do things for our student athletes in a manner that we haven't been able to. And so we're excited about it. Um, you know, it's my job to kind of look forward, but also have a, a foot in the present and a foot in the future. Our coaches, their job is in the moment, you know, they're, they're coaching games and, and doing things now and they've got to recruit, but we also have to be mindful um, that we that we want to make sure we finish this year strong and we want to finish next year strong and we want to represent and compete in our current conference. And that's what we intend to do. Uh, but but there are a number of reasons why this was a, a, a great move for us. And, and we're excited for August 2nd, 2024. Well, so August 2024. OK, so we got some time yet. We got some time. Um, we're preparing. All righty. I was I uh, I got a question that came in. People are interested on what the future schedule is going to be. Um, <laughs> I am too. Okay. Tell, tell everybody I am too. Um, last week was the first time that we were invited to the Big Ten meetings in Chicago. So last week 
uh, myself, Mike Titel, our faculty athletic rep, uh, Christina Rivera, um, our senior women's administrator, and Josh Rebholz. We all went to Chicago and sat in on two days worth of meetings uh, where they talked about the formation of scheduling and the process. Um, they, didn't, they didn't get to a scheduling mechanism that's gonna probably be months away, um, but at least we kind of learned more about how they operate, how they look at things and, and how they have scheduling parameters and, and principles. So that's something we're all anxiously awaiting. Obviously our coaches need to start planning and scheduling games for the 2024 year. And you know, you can't really do your non-conference until you have a better understanding of what the conference schedule looks like. But you know, I think we're months away from that. Got it. Okay. Well, I just know it's gonna be some great matchups. Well, every, everybody's <laughs> excited, that's for sure. Uh, I want to come back to something you you mentioned, name, image, and likeness. Yeah. And you know, get your thoughts on sort of how is that changing collegiate athletics? What does that mean for Bruins? You know, we've got Westwood Ascent that's been set up. Um, what does this all mean? Yeah. So before I get into that, I just want to let everybody know if you hear screams in the background, I've got three little girls. I love them, Scarlett, Savannah, and Serena, seven, five, and three. So if you hear some screaming. This is this is Zoom from from home, you know. So uh, so I just want to put that out there. Um, nobody's hurt. Nobody's in trouble. This is just kind of what happens every night. Um, but uh, NIL is a game changer. Name, image, and likeness uh, is something I've been a proponent for for a long time. You know, I, to let our student athletes benefit from their from their image and their brand, they learn business principles. Uh, and so what we've tried to do because there are rules that don't allow us. Uh, to go out and get NIL deals or help foster that. We can't do that as an athletics program. There are groups called collectives where it's alumni, donors, different entities that they can do name, image, and likeness deals with student athletes. Um, but what I've tried to say is we're going to do everything we can in our power to help our student athletes navigate through name, image, and likeness. So what we've done is we created Westwood Ascent. We were one of the first schools in the country to have a comprehensive exchange where basically uh, fans, alumni, donors can come onto this exchange and then student athletes can be on this end and you can work directly with each other to, to strike deals um, for student athletes and companies, organizations, businesses, and, and they can be from product or it could be from services, whatever it is. And they do it directly and our system kind of does the back end tax form and different things uh, to help them with that. The other thing we did, and this is the beauty of UCLA, we have so much talent on campus. It is ridiculous that the level of excellence that we have. So we partnered with the law school because what happened is our student athletes, a lot of times student athletes reach out to me through, through Instagram and DMs. I mean, that's just, that's just the way they communicate. And they would tell me that, you know, I'm getting all these NIL offers um, in, my, in my DMs and I don't, you know, I'm not savvy enough to know contract language, that kind of thing. So we partnered with the law school and we have a program where uh, a couple nights a week, they have a, a clinic where a couple 3L, um, third year law students, along with uh, some faculty, I think it's two faculty members in the law school, um, set up hours. And student athletes can come and bring deals and get advice and counsel from a legal perspective. So some, some of our student athletes may have an agent, uh, but I'd say it's probably less than 5%. Uh, the, the rest, the other 95%, you know, we're, we're trying to help them with those services. Uh, we've also worked with Anderson School of Management on some, some, some coursework, some different things, some seminars to help them with their brand, understanding good decisions, those kind of things, plus Westwood Ascent. So we are, we're partnering with campus partners, and it's been great because, you know, it's, again, it's another resource for our student athletes outside of the athletic program. Uh, but it's a game changer. And, I, and I'll give you an example of how important NIL is now. We have 700 student athletes, Chris, roughly. Can you, can you guess how many of the 700 have some form of NIL deal? Meaning they can post something and they get free product or they do some social wise, you know, whatever it is. Out of 700, how many do you think have some form or fashion of an NIL deal? 100? 350 roughly. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Half. So this is something that just was introduced in the college athletics industry a year ago. And now half of our student athletes 
are, are taking advantage of it. So on one hand, it's great. On the other hand, we need to really help resource and, and help them with the level of sophistication as they navigate and learn about their brand, doing deals, um, what products do I want to endorse? What do I want to be involved with? How do I manage my time? All of those things. And, and the beauty, they can learn it while they're at Westwood instead of being a professional. Great. Well, talking about endorsements and how to earn money, we, we got a question about your bear wear there, your vest. So you're, wear, you're wearing the legacy Joe Bruin, uh, and folks are wondering if that's available to purchase. Sorry, my cat just came in here. So uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the, so the Joe Bruin is something that we're trying to do more of. I think ASUCLA and the UCLA campus store is going to have more in the fall. The thing is, we have to ramp up. You know, all of this is, is really Nike and ASUCLA. I don't have much say, um, actually, in what goes to retail as much as I know some of you Bruins out there are like, oh, Martin, do this. this. I don't, I don't, I don't make those decisions. You know, um, what I'm trying to do is work a little more um, with ASUCLA and Nike to make sure there's certain things that we may order uh, for our student athletes or the athletic department that maybe we can get some of those things to retail. Those things take time, but but um, I think you'll see more and more as we continue on with the relationship. Uh, but again, I love Joe Bruin. I think I think we got to lean into that a little bit. I think you'll see a little Joe Bruin more this upcoming year. And some things, and um, like I said, that's a proud history. And and uh, who doesn't love Joe Bruin? I, I'm 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 a fan. Well, and I'm looking over your shoulder there. You've got you've got the gold helmet, and you've got a white helmet. Uh, is are are we thinking that maybe as part of our agreement with Nike that we might be doing some alternative uniforms, or is that? That's just a that's a helmet that we wore a couple of years ago. I, I like to keep it here uh, at home because it's I, you know football is really important to the to the livelihood and lifeblood of our program, and uh, it's it's a good reminder for me that uh, we got to try to do everything we can to help our football program, and it's important to all of our sports and our athletic program. So um, that doesn't mean just because you see a white helmet, that doesn't mean we're going to be wearing white helmets anytime soon. That's just something that that I got when I first got here. Oh, oh, um, a little, I think a it was little, a gift. A gift swag. Got it. I think it was a gift. Yeah, I think it was a gift. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know when we wore them. I know it was a few years ago. Got it. Well, but we might have something in the works at some point. I, I, you know, never say never as far as as uh, uniform. But, um, you know, we, we, we have a such a classic look that you don't want to you don't want to get too cute with something uh, with those colors and, and just um, a nationally worldwide recognized brand. You don't you don't want to get too cute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you talked about how football, you know, is the lifeblood and helps support many of those 25 sports that you mentioned. You know, this year was it was a pivotal year for Title IX, celebrating 50 years. Um, so I'm interested in sort of what's next for UCLA women in sports. Yeah, you know, this was the the, the Title IX 50th anniversary, and uh, you know, it's it's been amazing. Our 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 women's athletics and, and teams, you know, they've won over 40 national championships, uh, and it might even be closer to 50. Actually, I don't have the exact number offhand, but uh, we've had phenomenal success, and the growth uh, of some of our sports in the women's game has been phenomenal. Uh, so we're celebrating. We we had a Women of Westwood initiative, a fundraising initiative, celebration initiative. And that's been highly successful, uh, bringing more visibility to our women's sports and continuing to uplift and promote um, some of the phenomenal student athletes that we have that compete at the highest level. Uh, so we're, we're excited. We've got some teams competing right now. We've got some things planned for this summer. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that for us, um, we expect excellence. We demand excellence in, in our, our women's sports. Um, have have really really excelled across the country when you look at the history. And again, I mean, I can name so many greats. I don't want to. I don't want to say like Andy Myers. Well, we we, we, we had a, we had a championship not too long ago. Maybe I our, our women's soccer. Women's soccer won a national championship in December. Um, women's golf, like an hour ago, just won a tournament. Um, I think it was the the Beach Invitational. I believe women's golf just won. This is their third win, third tournament win. Carrie Forsyth does a great job um been been phenomenal so it's, it's it's cool to see well and how do you manage to get around all these sports as is, anybody who follows you on instagram 
uh, you are a prolific poster of content and give a nice sampling of all the sports. How, yeah, how do you take gotta, time to get around all the practices or, or the games? Yeah, I've got I've got to do less of that because it's, it'll wear you out. You know, I, I try to to be present and get around because I really want to just promote and support our teams, our student athletes and what we're doing, our brand. You know, part of it, you know, I don't I don't it, it's like with social media it's the gift and the curse. And I, and I tell people this sometimes, like I don't get evaluated on social media like I, I could I could stop doing social media tomorrow and be fine. Trust me. But why I do it is because I want to promote and put UCLA out there in, in the spotlight because our student athletes and our excellence deserves that. And I really feel that that helps us. You're always recruiting. You know, I've had so many people tell me, hey, it looks like UCLA athletics wins, it's fun, it's exciting. Um, those are the kind of things that I wanna promote. And also for our student athletes, I wanna brag about them. I wanna promote them. Um, it's, it's brand building and brand management. And so, you know, I don't, again, I don't, I don't uh, get evaluated on doing social media. But I try to do it because I think that um, that's going to help us. I just think it's a positive. And so I try to get to sports. I can't get to them all, but I'll try to do a practice here and there or a game. Uh, but you just do the best you can. You know, um, we have a lot of sports. We have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on in the city. But um, but our student athletes are so talented. Whenever I can, I can I, I try to just get around to something. Well, and thank you for also being so generous and taking all those wonderful selfies with the alumni, whether it's at the Rose Bowl or Poly or wherever it is, uh, you always make the time to stop and say hi and, and grab a picture. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, it's fun. I love meeting Bruins. I love when people come up and, and talk about how excited they are about the competition or some of our teams. Uh, and I get a lot of feedback also. I, I get, there are a lot of athletic directors out there. So I get, I get a lot of unsolicited advice also. I love it though. I'd rather you care than not. So I, I, I love the passion and you know, um, I'll always appreciate that. Well, one of the things uh, when we met in New York and thank you for making the trip to see all the Bruins in the tri-state area in New York, New Jersey and Connecticut. Um, it was great to have you there. Great to have you there in December for the tournament at Madison Square Garden, um, you know, for, for Bruins everywhere and maybe those that are out of town and can't get to games on a regular basis, how, how can alumni support UCLA athletics? Well, the first thing I can say is, is you know, wherever you are, um, there's so many ways to support, but, but the, the main ones, if you can come to a competition, come to a competition. There's nothing like when our student athletes can feel your energy, they feed off of that. So, so we want Bruins to come to our games, cheer our student athletes on because that's the best support you can give because that helps them uh, and, and, comp and competing and doing what they love, right? So that's the first thing. If you're around, if you can get there, come to a game. Second one um, is there, there are a couple of ways to support financially, buying a ticket, obviously, but also becoming a Wooden Athletic Fund member. Um, you know, donations and, and philanthropy is so important to what we're trying to do. I know there's a lot of chaotic times in college athletics. I know we're going to another conference, but guess what? That money is the same as all the people we're competing against. You know, we still have to do and invest in our students and programming to be where we want to be. And we need everybody. We're not going to, we're not going to hit home runs on the philanthropy as much. We got to hit singles and doubles and we got to get everybody involved. So I really would, would, would ask you to consider making a gift to Wooden Athletic Fund. Um, we also have um, different, different ticket packages. We have the Golden Pass. If you're 10 years out, alumni 10 years out, it's like Netflix. You can pay a certain amount. I, I believe it's $14.99. Uh, and you get a monthly subscription and you can come to any games and you can request a number of tickets. And if we have availability, you get tickets. So um, that's really important. And then also everybody works. I say most, most everybody works for a company internships, you know, our student athletes need work experience, need those opportunities. When they leave Westwood, they need work experience, work opportunities. So if there are internships or jobs, or you can go to your HR department and say, Hey, you know, I know that UCLA, um, we have a, 
We have a student athlete development program. Rick Coy runs that. So, so our student athlete development program, we have um, resume building workshops. We bring companies in, we do Zooms. If they have an interest in business or entertainment or finance, you know, whatever it is, we have Bruins that are interested. So if, if, if you can't um, maybe get back and you're far further away and you're not here in LA, everybody has some, some, some internship or, or maybe some alumni, some mentorship that, that our student athletes would benefit from. Well, and I took advantage of that program. I, I spoke with Rick and he had a student that was very interested in data analytics. Yes. And, uh, you know, help get that uh, student athlete connected to the right people. Um, so I highly recommend the program. I think it's fantastic. That's right. And thank you for doing that, Chris. That was something that uh, was huge. You know, to have somebody like you or others that have the work experience you have to be able to share and help our student athletes open doors and think about different industries, different ideas is, is, that's huge. That's what it's about. Bruins helping Bruins. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a question here. You were talking about getting to the games and people are already thinking about traveling for big 10 games. Uh, any thought uh, so far about, is there going to be a designated travel agency or how do we do that? Or how do you, how do you coordinate and get those? Or is that coming? Cause we're, That's, I mean, we're, years. we are a long way away from that, okay. Chris. We, you know, we, we, it's like, it's like, we're focused on one thing at a time right now. We have committees set up in our athletics program, um, five different committees, the student athlete experience, um, resources, looking at our competitors, other schools in the big 10, what are they strong at? Um, what are we strong at? What are some deficiencies? What are some things we need to do to ramp up to be ready to compete day one? So we're doing a lot of assessment and data. And then we're going to look at um, just kind of how we can better or best prepare ourselves to make that transition. I'm sure we'll learn more about that. We don't even have the schedule. So we're not even thinking about there we go. travel and, and all that kind of thing until, um, you know, we can get kind of further along in that path. Got it. Well, I've got two last questions before we open it up for more questions. Um, okay. But you're talking about supporting the team. I, I'm building up to March Madness. But before we get there, <laughs> I want to ask you about um, our football team and filling the stadium at the Rose Bowl. I know there were a lot of programming this past year to really excite people and get them to go. What can we look forward to for this coming football season? Yeah, well, you know, I think Chip Kelly and our coaching staff, uh, we had a number of changes uh, that we just announced, I think, yesterday or today. Um, they've done a phenomenal job with growing the program and developing young men. You know, um, if you look at the trajectory of our program, it's, it's been going like this. And, and that's, that's the excitement that, that I feel that I know a lot of Bruins feel um, for our football program. You know, Chip Kelly does it the right way. We had 21 graduates on the team this past year. Young men that, you know, they say books and ball, but put academics um, and graduating first and foremost, and then athletic competition and, and work hard and compete at the highest level. So it's something um, that, that all Bruins can be proud of how our football program um, runs, operates and develops young people. And uh, we're excited. You know, we, we, uh, we won nine games this year. You know, uh, 10 is the most that we've ever won in a season. So we were right there knocking on the door. Um, and we've got a lot of returners and we've got a lot of new new energy coming uh, among our student athletes on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. So there's a lot of excitement. And in the Rose Bowl, you know, um, every year that I've been here, you know, we try to do some different things, add a couple elements. You know, we want to make it um, a, a great environment for our student athletes. Again, energy starts with students. We want to get as many students there as possible. And then and everybody grows from that. You know, once students are, la are loud and yelling. It's easy for everybody else to get up and, and yell and get into it. So um, we're going to keep working with the Rose Bowl to try to make it fun and exciting. And um, I'm looking forward to next fall. Well, the, the game the, the game against USC was sold out and it felt great. Really good energy. It was electric. That night was electric. You know, that was um, that was a showcase. I mean, all of L.A. stopped that night and, and, and had their eyes on the Rose Bowl and the Bruins. And so uh, that was that was a great atmosphere, great energy, and our fans really responded strong, and, and it, was, uh, it was cool to see. Well, that is great. And then speaking of sold out, we've got a couple basketball games coming up and a little thing like March Madness around the corner. Um, how's it feeling on campus? And you were a student athlete. You went to the tournament. 
Tell us. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I mean, you know, first uh, hats off to the men's basketball team for uh, winning the Pac-12 championship 32nd uh, in our history. And uh, Mick Cronin and his staff have done a, a, a tremendous job. You know, I'm probably going to just stop there, though, because Mick would probably get mad at me for talking about winning a, a, a regular season championship because he knows he has his eyes um, and their sights on, on higher ground. And so they're working hard. Um, it's been nice to see this team come together. They're really close. Um, you see it on the court, but they're really close off the court. So I love when I go to practice seeing the chemistry and just how the guys really love each other and appreciate each other. Uh, we got two home games this week. We've got Arizona State uh, Thursday night, and uh, we've got uh, the Wildcats uh, Saturday. And that's a sellout. That's going to be sold out. It's going to be it's going to be packed. JP jam packed. So uh, I'm excited about that. And I'm knocking on wood here. Uh, we've been we've been playing really well at home, and uh, we have the currently the longest um, home winning streak in the country. And uh, we got a lot to play for. So. I'm excited, and uh, it's, it's cool to see Polly be really alive and rocking. Well, that's great. Well, I've got some great questions here for you, and you're talking about giving the energy. I'm feeling the energy. Yes, let's and, go, uh, Chris. Let's go. And what, what one of our <laughs> Bruins said, given your schedule, how do you find balance? How do you relax? Yeah, so I don't believe in balance. Um, I believe in harmony. And the way I say that is there are times where – you know, you've got to be 70, 30 with the job because that's what it demands. March is a prime example. You know, I talked to my wife, my family, you know, I'm traveling a lot in March. I'm gone a lot. So, so when I got to be home, those one, two, three days, I got to be locked in, you know, I got to be locked in with my, with my girls and just, and, and be, but, but that's the harmony. But then after that time period, you know, there might be time where uh, I, I need to take a break. I need to be at home more. I need to, go to my daughter's practice um, and, and just do those things. So I think it's always a harmony that you try to achieve because it, it changes based on your schedule and where things are. Um, and you've got to be in tune with that. And so I try to, I try to do a better job and check in here at home and, and with others that, that know me because I want to do it all. I'm, I'm just that kind of guy and I can't do it all, but I try. Um, but I just try to find the harmony and know when I got to give more on this side, when I got to give more on this side. And when you can incorporate the two, it's great. But, you know, my girls don't always want to go to a two hour game. You know, they're, they're like done in like 20 minutes and they're ready to go back home. And I'm like, you live in the Valley, man. that's a long drive. Like, you know, we can't just go. So, um, <laughs> but it's, but it's fun, but that's, that's what it is. And I, I like working out. I think, um, you know, I'm a big proponent. I say mind, right, game, right. You know, I think you can't be your best unless your game can't be your best unless your mind is, is there first. And so you really got to take care of yourself um, and, and your mental health and your well-being. I think that's really important. So I try to take time in the mornings. I'm a workout, workout guy in the morning, getting back into yoga a little bit too, try to do that uh, once a, a week and, um, and really just kind of check in and make sure that I, I try to take care of myself. So uh, those are the things. Well, that's, that's great. And I was going to ask you, you know, you're a parent and obviously you're, you're dealing with elite athletes, but you also, as you say, you go to your daughter's games. What, what advice do you have for parents that are on the sidelines? <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many parents that are, that are uh, getting on the, the volunteer referees and volunteer coaches. Um, no, you know, I, I think, um, you know, sports are funny because it brings out the passion in people and you see that. And um, I, I, you know, this was the first year that my, my oldest and my middle child, uh, they played soccer in the fall and it was cool to see. And, um, you know, what I learned is, um, you know, we're, we're probably um, hard as parents on our, our, our kids and, and we want to see them do well, but we got to keep in mind, we, they, they got to have fun too. And that's what my daughter's teaching me. Cause I'm so serious about like, you got to do this and you got to work on this. And she's like, this ain't fun, dad. Like I want to have fun. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's probably most important is to have fun. So, um, you know, I don't know if I'm the right person to give advice. I just think you got to love them. And, uh, and if you get that right, the rest of the rest will fall into place. And so I try to just remember that, that, um, you give what you can, you just love them, make sure they know they're loved and, and, um, you know, it'll work out. Great advice. Great advice. Well, shifting gears, um, 
you've inspired a lot of people. And one of, one of our Bruins said, what advice would you give to someone wanting to do what you do, Martin? Division one college athletic director. Oh, everybody's path is different. You know, I think you've got to find if you if you if you want to be an athletic director in athletic administration or college, um, you got to find the area that you're passionate about. There's so many different areas to get involved in college athletics, marketing, development, ticketing, compliance, uh, event management, facilities, um, IT. That there's so many there's so many you know paths. So I would tell you to try to identify what you think your skill set would allow you to shine. I've always been good. With people, I, I try to be a connector. I think connectivity is, is like one of the most important skills that a person can have relationship building, but learning how to connect. And that, that lends itself well for me for fundraising and working with people. And, you know, I didn't mind asking for money and, 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 and hearing from successful people. So um, I think you got to try to find what you're passionate about and, um, and go to school for it too. You know, I got a master's in sports administration. It's really hard to break in sometimes in college athletics because everybody wants to do it. They think it's fun. They think all you do is just go to games. They don't see all the issues and stuff that happen. That's fine. You know, you see, you know, I tell people, you see that the, everybody on social media, you see like the best things, right? You don't see the hard days or the hard times and hard moments that we all go through. But I would say, um, you know, find something that you're passionate in as far as one of those paths and then try to get some, some volunteer experience. That's what I tell young people all the time. If you can go to an athletic department and say, hey, I'd love to volunteer and work an event or work a game to try to get your foot in the door because a lot of people want to work in college athletics. Um, that's always a good start too. Well, and it, as it, thinking about all the things that an athletic director does, one of them is hiring. And you've certainly hired, whether it's here or at Boston College, a number of coaches. Um, what advice would you give to people that are in a position to hire somebody? And when you're hiring a coach, what are you looking for? Um, there's a couple things, you know, one, I, I look for integrity. You gotta, you gotta do it the right way. I don't want to lose sleep on how you're going to run the program. And so um, you have to be a person of integrity and in how you, how you operate your program um, and hunger. I hire for hunger. You know, I want someone that, that is hungry for an opportunity uh, and, and, and really will do everything they can to elevate that program and give the student athletes a great experience, passion and energy. Um, that's important to me. Again, when you walk in a room, do you bring it up or you bring it down? You know, what, what, what kind of impact do you make on the people around you? So, so hunger, passion, integrity, um, energy, and a teacher, you know, I want someone that can teach the game and teach young people. Um, they're so impressionable. And, um, you, you know, you got to be able to teach the, the game that you that you love. And the last one I would say is leadership. You know, I look for leadership first and foremost. You know, is this a person that can lead a program that we have confidence in as a, a leader of young women or young men? Great. Well, I've got a couple of questions that are, are verging off of that topic. Uh, one is on the music front. What's the music that's on your playlist? What are you listening to when you go out for those morning runs? Oh man, it's it's. I have a very um, diverse taste in music, so it's uh, it's it, it changes it changes like every day. I mean, uh, I love jazz, um, but like today I was listening to country, Jason Aldean. You know, like, like different people. Um, uh, I was listening to the Carpenters this morning. Um, you know, I, I, it's just, I, it's all over the board. I would tell you that there's no like one thing that comes to mind. It's just, um, it just depends on my mood. Well, I love that. Like, 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 like the variety. Um, one of our Bruins has asked, you've done so much professionally. You've got a rich family life. You're trying to balance it all. What's on your bucket list? Travel overseas. I haven't traveled overseas much. Uh, definitely want to do more of that. Um, it's funny. Yeah. Now that you ask me music, like uh, we've only just begun by the Carpenters. That was like in my playlist. I love that song. So, so that was in my head. That's so sweet. But anyway, yeah, yeah, we've only just begun. Pretty song. Um, what's on my bucket list? Uh, that's a good one. Um, 
You know, I'm so locked in on what I'm doing and what we're doing with our athletics program and, you know, going to the Big Ten, trying to figure out uh, NIL and different things. I mean, there's so much going on in our in our profession. Um, I'm really locked in on, on just what we can do to, to move our program forward and be smart and strategic. So I, I you know, the, the move to the Big Ten was a big one. That's, that's huge for us. I think people um, a couple of years from now will really see the magnitude of this move for us and how, how good it's gonna be for our program. Um, that doesn't mean I have all the answers. I know how things are going to turn out, but um, I think that is um, it's a game changer for our program. And so, you know, I don't have a bucket list kind of thing right now. I'll think about that. That's something I should think about more. Um, but I know I do want to go overseas because my, my wife hasn't been overseas. We talked about that the other day, actually this morning. We talked about that, um, about trying to go somewhere in the summer of 24. But, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, you know, I'm just locked in. It's, it's, it's hard. I, I just, uh, you know, I just well, want to make we're, sure we're, that we're doing We appreciate your focus. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're the beneficiary of your lack of balance. So <laughs> thank you and sorry to your family. Oh, um, no, all good. All good. Um, I love it. In terms of, you know, um, the SoFi Stadium opened up and it's so gorgeous. Um, you know, some alumni are wondering, would we, would we make a change and play some games there? Or are we going to see out our time before we go to the Big Ten uh, over at the Rose Bowl? You know, I don't see anything in the imminent future. Um, I'd never say never, you know, different. There's so much change that happens. I, I never say never. But right now, I don't I don't see that in the immediate future to, to take our home game somewhere else. You know, we we love the Rose Bowl and, and the Rose Bowl have been great partners. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. You know, sometimes when you step outside of your world, you realize just like how wonderful great you know whatever adjective describe it you know being in the big 10 meetings and hearing people talk about playing at the rose bowl it's special you know it's a special place it's a special venue so um i don't you know i i don't foresee that but i'm not going to sit here and say never because you just you just never know what kind of opportunity to different things arise Makes how you sense. like that answer <laughs> I, I i i i i like it um let me let me come back to the tournament because one of the things uh, that you got to do in your career was you served on the NCAA basketball committee, um, and how was that having been a student athlete, team captain, led your team to their first tournament appearance, and then twenty years later to be sitting in those rooms? It was it was one of the best professional uh, experiences of my life. Chris, um, you know, playing, playing college basketball, you always look at the NCAA tournament and, and the committee is the, is the group of people that, that put the tournament together and uh, select the team. So uh, to serve last year was, a, was an honor. Um, it was, I had a five-year term and, and unfortunately it, it ended prematurely after one year because of our, our move. And, um, but I'm grateful for the people that were in the room. I got to know uh, some of my colleagues across the country and work hand in hand, side by side, long hours, tough decisions. Um, there's so much work that the committee does to pick the tournament. And, you know, it's like I take a, I mean, I'm alumni now, even though I was only on it for one year. Um, I take offense when people say, you know, um, well, this team or that team, there's so much that goes into looking at all the metrics and the numbers and, and who did you play? Where did you play them and how'd you do, you know, and it comes down to those three things. And, and those people work so hard to try to get it right and do the best they can. So uh, it was an honor for me. Uh, it was something that I had a, as a goal when I was um, when I first got into college athletics to be on the men's basketball committee. And, um, you know, it was a it was a dream come true. And uh, I'm just grateful that I had the experience to do it for a year. Well, and as you told me, being on the committee meant that you couldn't travel with the team. So now, right. now, 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 now you're able to, to, to join in the excitement and celebrate with all of us. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm ready. I'm ready for that Sunday. Great. Well, Martin, thank you so much for all of your time this evening. I, I, I want to wrap up by uh, giving you the microphone and saying, what, what are things that you want alumni to know or to hear from you that we haven't covered so far? Chris, you've done a phenomenal job. Thank you, first of all, for, for doing this. Uh, you make it easy. You make it easy for me. Um, 
You know, I just want you to know that that our athletics program is one that you could be very proud of. You know, we we take it very seriously. Alumni, you know, you went to UCLA. We work really hard to represent you the right way. Um, there are a lot of things that that go on in our business and college athletics that um, you could take the shortcut. And we don't take the shortcut. And I want you to know that, you know, our coaches, um, they work hard. Um, they do it the right way. Our student athletes, you know, they represent those four letters. They represent you. And there's a lot of pride and energy and passion and commitment to go into that. So I want you to know um, that we understand uh, the expectations of excellence, but most importantly, representing UCLA the right way. And that's something that I want you to know that, that we think about and we take that very seriously as we continue to try to elevate our athletics program to, to represent, bring, be a beacon of light uh, for UCLA. Well, I, that is amazing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And please um, say thank you to all the student athletes for us, for representing us so well. Um, and hopefully they can hear all the Bruins cheering around the world for them. Um, and appreciate everything you do. And thank you to your lovely family for having them share you with us 70% of the time. <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time. No, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your support. Um, whenever you can, come to a game on social media. Be positive about our young people, okay? Um, it's hard. They, they, it's, it's hard being a student athlete with all the pressures and everything. Let's make sure we uplift them and support them. And um, we're going to make you proud. Go Bruins. There we go. So, Joseph, back to you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Um, everyone tuning in, join me again for thanking Chris for leading this conversation with Martin. And Martin, we appreciate your wisdom and leadership and are really excited about what's ahead for UCLA Athletics. Um, so thank you. And to everyone who tuned in, hope you have a good night and a wonderful rest of your week. Go Bruins. Go Bruins. <laughs>